So now let's look at the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to produce water to understand limiting reagent calculations better. Let's imagine that we have one mole of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. And we have to find out which of these two is the limiting reagent. So let's examine the equation. The equation can be written in a number of different forms and here are two of them. This one at the bottom is the one in which we normally write the equation because it gives the simplest ratio of whole numbers. Two hydrogen molecules for every one oxygen molecule to give two water molecules. But it can also be written like this just by dividing everything through by two. Every one hydrogen molecule needs half an oxygen molecule and produces one water molecule. And while that doesn't really make sense because you don't get half oxygen molecules, it might sometimes be useful to help us to think about things. Especially because the ratio doesn't only refer to molecules like shown here in the picture where we have two hydrogen molecules for one oxygen molecule for two water molecules produced. But it also refers to any factor of these number of molecules, for example, groups of moles. Then it does make sense to say one mole of hydrogen gas reacts with half a mole of oxygen gas to produce one mole of water. That's not the same thing as one molecule and half a molecule and one molecule. You do get such a thing as half a mole. You don't get such a thing as half a molecule. Remember, mole is 6,02 times 10 to the power 23. So one mole of hydrogen is 6,02 times 10 to the power 23 hydrogen molecules, whereas half of that is half of this number, which is then 3,01 times 10 to the power 23 which obviously you do get. So we know that one mole, which is what we have of hydrogen, needs half a mole of oxygen, but we have a whole mole, not just half a mole. So can you see which is the limiting reagent? Which of these two will run out first, will be finished before the other one? So can you see that at the end of the reaction, we are still going to have half a mole of oxygen left over unreacted because only one half is needed to react with the hydrogen to produce water. The other half is extra, excess. So you can see from that that the one that gets used up first is hydrogen. Hydrogen is the limiting reagent here in this particular example. Because although it's all used up, oxygen is not all used up yet. There's still half a mole of it left. Because this one mole of hydrogen only needs half a mole, but we have a whole mole. So let's work through this. Before the reaction, the actual amount that we have of hydrogen is one mole and oxygen one mole. Afterwards, we have one mole of water which was formed by that process and half a mole of oxygen which did not react because only half a mole was needed there. So the mass of hydrogen which we had before the reaction was 2 grams and the mass of oxygen was 32 grams. So the total mass of reactants or rather of substances which could react but not necessarily did react was 32 four grams. One mole of water has a mass of 18 grams H2O and half a mole of oxygen has a mass of 16 grams. So the total mass of things that we have at the end after the reaction has happened is 18 plus 16 which is also 34 grams. So no matter has been created or destroyed. Now let's write the ratios. Now that we get from the balanced equation and we know the balanced equation is 2H2 plus 1O2 gives 2H2O, which is also 1H2 plus half an O2 gives 1H2O. But let's write it in the normal format here. Two moles of hydrogen reacts with one mole of oxygen to form two moles of water. That doesn't mean that we actually had two moles of hydrogen. We didn't. We only had one mole of hydrogen. This is a ratio. It's not the actual amounts. The ratio is just the proportion in which they react, how the various things are related 
to one another written in the simplest form that gives whole numbers so the mass ratio this is a particle ratio and we can convert that particle ratio into a mass ratio and that's what we need to do here so the mass ratio is two moles of hydrogen is four grams one mole of oxygen 32 grams and two moles of water is 18 times two which is 36 grams again we can see no matter created or destroyed because four plus 32 is 36 again that is not what we actually have here no this is what we actually have here two grams and 32 grams and 18 grams and 16 grams left over that's the actual amounts the ratio just means the proportion in which they always react now we're just going to write this ratio over in another form in an equivalent form to make it easier to think about this particular problem let's divide everything through by two so one mole hydrogen is to half a mole oxygen is to one mole water we've spoken about that already and therefore two grams hydrogen is to 16 grams oxygen is to 18 grams water so the moles of hydrogen that we need in this particular reaction is all of it all of that one mole of hydrogen that's there whereas we only need half of the mole of oxygen that's there and that will produce a single mole of water and there'll be some of the oxygen left over so the mass of hydrogen that's needed is two grams and the mass of oxygen that's needed is half a mole which is 16 grams we have 32 grams but only 16 is needed so half of it is just extra excess and so it's left behind at the end the mass of water produced is 18 grams the total mass required is 18 grams and the total mass produced is also 18 grams but another 16 grams remains unreacted and that's why the total mass we actually have of things that could possibly maybe react is 34 grams in actual fact only 18 of them can react 16 of them they don't have a partner to go with so they can't so which is the limiting reagent which one runs out first hydrogen it runs out first so there's none of it left at the end whereas oxygen there's some excess the one with excess is not the limiting reagent and the limiting reagent is the one that will produce which one less or more of the product if it can all be used up and hopefully answer correctly less so there we were reasoning it through with quite easy numbers so hopefully that was not too difficult but sometimes in a question we don't have such easy numbers so that it's a little difficult to reason through we need a method to be able to help us to calculate which is the limiting reagent so we're going to use such a method now to solve the problem again if we have one mole of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen and they react together to produce water which of these two is the limiting reagent and we're going to test which one produces less of the product in this case water if all of it can be used up so we first need our reaction ratios here we have a particle reaction ratio which we simply get from the coefficients two mole is to one mole is to two mole and we convert that into a mass reacting ratio two moles of hydrogen have a mass of two times two four grams that two is because it's h2 that one is the molar mass of h one mole of oxygen that two there is why we must multiply this by two we look on the periodic table and o has a molar mass of 16 grams so that gives us 32 grams 32 grams is the mass of one mole of o2 2 times 18 grams is 36 grams that's the mass of two moles of water so the reacting ratio in mass is four grams of hydrogen for every 32 grams of oxygen to produce 36 grams of water notice that four plus 32 gives 36 no matter is created or destroyed so we use these ratios to help us to answer this question how many moles of water are produced if one mole of hydrogen can react completely because we started with one mole hydrogen and we want to compare oxygen and hydrogen how much product will they produce if each one is allowed to react completely 
So we need to multiply this by a conversion factor, which is the reacting ratio for this particular reaction, with mole of hydrogen at the bottom, we see it's 2, and mole of water at the top, and we see that is also 2. So they actually react in the ratio 1 is to 1, which is also 2 is to 2. So if one mole of hydrogen reacts completely, it will produce 1 mole of water, which is what we said previously as well. Let's compare that to if all the oxygen that we started with, we also started with a mole of oxygen, if all of it can react. So how many moles of water are produced if one mole of oxygen can react completely? So we need to multiply this by a conversion factor which comes from our reacting ratios, making sure that mole of oxygen is at the bottom to cancel that away. And we see mole of oxygen, it's one mole. Mole of water must be at the top to introduce the new unit. And we see it's two mole of water. One times two is two mole of water. So if all of the oxygen could have reacted, it would have produced two moles of water, whereas if all of the hydrogen can react, it would only produce one mole of water. That's why the hydrogen is the limiting reagent, because it will produce less product. This one would produce one mole water. This one would produce two moles water. One is obviously less than two, so in this particular question, the hydrogen is the limiting reagent. The hydrogen will be used up first, and it will determine how much product can actually be formed.